This week on the show, we have the founder and CEO of Untruth Adventures, Dan Blanchard. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that having a victim mentality keeps you stuck where you are and prevents you from moving forward. The reality is, when things don't go our way or we fail at something, the easiest thing to do is to feel sorry for ourselves. But the reality is having a victim mentality takes away our power and ability to choose to take life by the reins and take action toward our goals. Bumps in the road are simply a part of life, but it's our attitude after that which ultimately dictates who we become and where life will take us next. The next time you find yourself playing the blame game or feeling sorry for yourself, remind yourself that you are a powerful, capable force to be reckoned with and that you and you alone can change the course of your life by moving in the direction of what you desire. We can't always control what happens in life, but we can always control our own attitude and focus our efforts towards a better future. As Steve Miraboli quotes, today is a new day. Don't let your history interfere with your destiny. Let today be the day you stop being a victim of your circumstances and start taking action toward the life you want. You have the power and the time to shape your life. Break free from the poisonous victim mentality and embrace the truth of your greatness. You are not meant for a mundane or mediocre life. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And why did you decide to start on Cruise Adventures and kind of turn your passion into a career? You know, that's a really good question. And I, I think like many of us, we have to take some bumps along the road. And I had actually, I was an executive for a, a cruise line. And uh, uh, I went, I took a couple years to take my family sailing across the Pacific in our 42 foot sailboat. And when I came back to that job, it just, uh, you know, how, how could sailing across the Pacific and go to all the wild islands not change you? And it changed me. And, and I came back to my old job and it was, you know, going from one port to another. and. And that was the impetus of, of what is today, Uncruise Adventures, which is all about, if I, if I had you aboard my own sailboat, where would I take you? And that's the whole idea of Uncruise Adventures. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have the CEO of Uncruise Adventures, Captain Dan Blanchard. Dan, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing well. It's, I'm coming to you from rainy Seattle, but today it's sunny up in Juneau in my home. I wish I was there. Very, very nice. You have such an interesting story and you're the CEO of Uncruise Adventures. So let's talk about that. I know that your love for water and boating started at a young age. Uh, you would go oyster picking and explore winding waterways. So, so tell us about that and how it kind of you know grew your passion for water and boating. Yeah, well, you know, I was fortunate enough that when I was like four years old, my parents bought a tugboat on Puget Sound, or what we today call the Salish Sea. And I spent uh, all my youth up until 18, um, basically poking around Puget Sound, Canada and Alaska. And uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of oysters, a lot of snorkeling for crabs and all this kind of thing as a youth. Very, very nice. And, and why did you decide to start on Cruise Adventures and kind of turn your passion into a career? You know, that's a really good question. And I, I think like many of us, we have to take some bumps along the road. And I had actually, I was an executive for a, a cruise line. And uh, uh, I went, I took a couple years to take my family sailing across the Pacific in our 42 foot sailboat. And when I came back to that job, it just, uh, you know, how, how could sailing across the Pacific and go to all the wild islands not change you? And it changed me and, and I came back to my old job and it was, you know, going from one port to another. And, and that was the impetus of, of what is today Uncruise Adventures, which is all about if I, if I had you aboard my own sailboat, where would I take you? And that's the whole idea of Uncruise Adventures. 
Well, I love that, that you turned your passion into a career because I think that's so important, right? Some people, they never do that. They never take the, the leap. So I, I'm so glad you did that and it obviously paid off. I read that you were adopted into an Alaskan Tinglis tribe. So I have to ask you about that. Tell us more about that. That's definitely an adventure. You know, that's a really good question. I, uh, it, it's not unheard of to be adopted into Northwest cultures as an adult. And I was uh, in my very early 50s and a, a man I had known and had had a relationship with for three decades came to me and said, Dan, I'd like to adopt you into my family along with the governor of Alaska. Wow. And uh, there was a big potlatch and we carried a to totem poles or hundreds of people. And yeah, so I was adopted into the uh, Clinkett tribe. I belonged to the killer whale house and oh. I'm the moiety, the eagle. Uh, wow. And my name is Ganook. Wow, that is very interesting. I mean, <laughs> not a lot of people get to go through that experience. <laughs> and speaking about experiences, you've been able to travel the world. What's been your most memorable experience? I'm sure that's one of them, right? <laughs> Well, certainly, I mean, because on a personal level, that is, is so close. But I think like everyone, you know, that the personal experiences you have are oftentimes related to family or friends that you're with. Um, the location is very important, but oftentimes secondary. And, uh, but, but for me, I'm, I'm an Alaska boy through and through. And I, one, one memory that just came up on social media is a few years ago, I took a a seven day kayak out in the wilderness oh, wow. with my then uh, 28 year old daughter. Wow. And, and that for, for a dad to spend that much time with his adult child and see bears on the beach and have whales next to us, and sea lions. Wow, that sounds amazing and beautiful. And you got to spend it with someone you love, which is which is amazing. And I want to talk about Uncruise Adventures. You guys have so many different packages and, you know, traveling is now happening back after COVID. So it's exciting times. So tell us about some of the packages that you guys have. Well, yeah, and it is an, an exciting time to be yeah. covering COVID for all of us. Yeah. But, you know, our primary business started in Alaska. We do seven night and 14 night trips that are um, kind of soft to high adventure trips, uh, depending on what the guest wants. And we do, we operate that in Alaska State, and the Salish Sea, the Columbia and Snake Rivers. Uh, we operate all late fall and winter in Hawaii and Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, uh, Belize, and uh, even the Galapagos. So uh, yeah. quite a few places to go with us. Very nice. And for someone that's, you know, coming on Uncruise Adventures, what would their experience be like? Walk us through an experience on Uncruise Adventures because it sounds exciting. <laughs> well, you know, the great thing about Uncruise Adventures, you have lots of options from, from, from very challenging outdoor activities to just strolling on the beach. So that's true on every one of our trips. But I think the, the thing that really happens with Uncruise Adventures, it's, it's a not so much about what's on the boat, but what's off the boat. Uh, I once described it as, if you took your favorite ski lodge or your favorite backcountry park lodge and plopped it on the hull of one of our boats, that's kind of what Uncruise is. We, we move to a different location at night. You have a new, new mountain in front of you or a new beach or a new place to go snorkeling with sea lions and this kind of thing. And that changes every night as you wake up the next morning at a new destination. Mm -hmm. And this sounds like a very personal experience. Um, how does it differ from like the traditional cruises out there? Well, the big thing is, you know, it, it is about the outdoors and the villages and the people we meet. It's not so much about making a port call at a big city. Uh, we don't have gambling, we don't have ice carving, this kind of thing. It's really about, uh, again, experiencing what's off the vessel. But the big thing is the small group size. Um, mm -hmm. To really do this in nature, you can't do this with you know three or 4,000 people. Um, so our trips are, are limited to a maximum of 88, and we average around 60 passengers per trip. Oh, very nice. And for the Alaskan crews, I know there's like whale watching, there's different things. So walk us through an experience for the Alaskan cruise, which I know uh, is your speciality. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're underway right now. We're, gosh, we're into, uh, we've been operating in Alaska for over a month during the dry season, which for Southeast Alaska is the spring. But you know, typically a trip might start, let's just say in Juneau, Alaska, my hometown, the capital, 
hemmed in by massive mountains. Uh, you can only get there by by plane or boat. And, and we'd go to maybe spend a couple days in Glacier Bay National Park where people have a chance to hike up next to a glacier, hop on top of the glacier oftentimes, wow. go in maybe ice caves if the ice caves are available. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's maybe a day of hiking at a place called Nika Inlet and uh, where it's just beautiful islands and kayaking and calm and there's whales around, you know, all the way to going up the to the wonders of Tracy Arm and, and Endicott Wilderness. Wow. So there's, it's all these areas. And then we usually mix in a, a native village in the mix too, so that folks have a chance to, to make, meet the Clinket and Haida and Simshim people of Southeast Alaska. And that's true almost everywhere we go. Wow, that sounds very nice. It doesn't sound like your traditional cruise. It sounds very personalized and really authentic to their experience, which I mean, everyone wants to experience, right? It sounds very exciting. Speaking of that, tell us about the title, Uncruise. Uh, what's the symbolism? Well, you know, I we, we are kind of the antithesis of the big cruise lines. And, uh, but, but when you're in that industry, the word cruise is very important. And back in the day when the internet was just firing off big time and, and people were starting to market more on online, we knew we had to have the name cruise in it, but we also were not the mega multinational corporate cruise, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, where it's just, it's more about the ship. Um, so what we looked at is we started planning the term uncruise into our marketing. We did a lot of market studies and. And we found out to no surprise that the that the cruise industry didn't like that name nor the travel industry necessarily, but the guests loved it because they they understood it was it was cruising, but not in the normal way. So our our guests that sail with us, they call themselves uns. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and our crew calls themselves the uncrew. <laughs> and so the, this whole thing gets uh, unparalleled attention amongst our guests. Very nice. And speaking about guests, what kind of feedback have you had since they had this this amazing adventure on your cruises <laughs> or on cruises? Well, you know, obviously it all depends on the client because the client that we get is is typically someone who maybe when they were in their teens or twenties went to Europe on fifteen bucks or twenty five bucks a day. They've been adventuring all their life, but now they're maybe 50, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90 years old, and they're still hopping in a kayak. They're just not packing a tent. They want a nice, comfortable mattress. They want exceptional food. So that type of client finds our product very good. And, and then, you know, part of it is, is making sure we have the right client on board our boat. So we try to weed that out and we talk to people so they understand you know, we're not your typical cruise line by any means. We really are more associated with adventure and experiential travel than we are with cruise, actually. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, because you have so many different adventure packages, is is this just for thrill seekers or is it for families and couples? It's for everybody. And, you know, it's real common that we get the grandparent bringing their children mm -hmm. and their grandchildren. And, and there might be a group of six or eight or 10 people on board that the matriarch or patriarch is brought. And you know, the, the grandparents may, may slide into a kayak for an hour or two, or they may take a stroll on the beach, but it's the grandchildren and the children that might be going, I want to go on an all day hike. I want to go on an all day kayak. So we have, we need to have, and we do have both. And, and some, some grandparents are just happy to kind of hold court from the hot tub with a book. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. What's been the most rewarding part of having Uncruise Adventures? Because I'm sure you get a lot of feedback, you get to travel the world. So yeah, what's been the re most rewarding thing for you? Well, to me, it's it's when life-changing things come. And I, my mom always thought I was going to be a preacher because I was so concerned about others. And, um, and, and for me, the most inspirational thing is when I get a guest that comes off the boat and they're just bawling, which happens a lot, about the experience they had and they they never knew that they could be so close to nature. They never knew that they were going to see a sea otter close at hand. They never knew that they were going to hear a bear eating salmon and hear the bones of the salmon breaking. It was so quiet. So these kind of things are, are oftentimes once-in-a-life experiences. and. 
And to, for me, that is the most satisfying because mm -hmm. I believe in the outdoors. I believe they should be preserved. And so to have that experience for our guests uh, is, is really the thing I hold most dear. Mm, I love that, that you're giving your um, people coming on board a very intimate experience. They get to see things that they wouldn't traditionally see on a huge ship, right? So I, I love that. <laughs> it sounds very exciting. And let's talk about the different adventure packages that you guys do have because you guys have quite a lot. I know you briefly talked about it, but let's go into that. Well, you know, again, uh, we take all our, or almost all of our ships, we take seven of our nine ships to Alaska every summer. And that is kind of our, our home base. It's our bread and butter. And, and we take people out to see, you know, creatures that aren't, aren't retracting in numbers, but expanding. For instance, sea otters, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when I was a kid and even into the 90s, there were no sea otters in Southeast Alaska. And now just in Glacier Bay alone, there's 10,000. So uh, we're in a part of the world that actually has more wildlife to today. So in Alaska, you get to see that. And Hawaii is, you know, a place many of us have traveled, but with Hawaii with an uncruise is really about you know, taking the cover back on the culture and going to Molokai and Halava Valley and, and learning the intricacies of not the luau, but the paina, what is to, what is really the, the true tradition of the Hawaiian people. And so these are all things that happen in Costa Rica. We visit many of the, the remote national parks that you can't get to by road. And this is true in Panama and Belize as well. So it's, it's a real mix of really trying to not only touch the human soul and heart through the experience, but get folks to, as you said so well, to locations and experiences they wouldn't normally be able to have at all. Sounds very exciting. <laughs> and, and Dan, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs watch this show to get inspired. So what advice would you have for them to create a successful company? What does it take? Well, you know, it, it certainly takes a lot of grit. Uh, there, and particularly as we're coming out of COVID, I think uh, particularly anyone in the hospitality industry is sitting there nodding their head. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but I think beyond that, you know, it, it, it's concept and execution. Uh, people are the key, uh, particularly on the hospitality side. And long-term planning and execution of the plan is really important, but also the flexibility. I mean, who would have ever dreamt of the, the curves we're all getting right now? Mm -hmm. And being able to be strategic as a small business person and sometimes make changes that are more rapid than you'd really like to be able to respond. But I think a, a good business plan, uh, you know, it's you can't speak enough about having capital available when you're first starting out a business. Yeah, absolutely. And wh where can people find out more about Uncruise Adventures? Well, you can just type Uncruise into your, your server, but uh, uh, it, it's uncruise.com. And uh, we're happy to chat with you. We have offices in Seattle, Washington. Our prime, prime office is in uh, Juneau, Alaska, where I'm headquartered. And uh, have people available 24 hours a day, even on, uh, to these days, even on, on, what do you call, chat. So oh. all sorts of good things. Very nice. Well, Dan, thank you so much for being on the show today. We definitely have to chat about me going on an uncruise adventure because yeah, it sounds very exciting, honestly, um, especially with traveling coming back. It's the, I think it'll be the perfect experience. <laughs> so I'm definitely well, gonna look into it. <laughs> yeah, d do, and uh, come with your family and, and get you on board so you can take a look at what kind of the antithesis of the big ship zone really is. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you so much, Dan, and we hope to have you back on the show soon. Thank you, pleasure chatting. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than